Welcome everybody. This is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the New Testament in 37 days. We're on day 14. Today we'll be continuing reading John, starting with chapter 14. So chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Love that verse. It's just so simple, straightforward. Right there, for everyone to understand. And it's easy. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through Christ. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth thee, sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but of the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very words, works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's a great verse right there about, um, you know, there's so many verses about prayer. When you pray, do it with confidence, unwavering, unrelenting, with fervent, uh, with fervency. So, yeah, when you pray, believe that you had already received it. That's what, that's what Jesus says. And here, anything you should ask in my name, I will do it. We must believe and have faith in him that he will answer our prayers. And in this last part, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah, if we're Christ followers, little Christ's is what you know a Christian is. The term Christian has lost its meaning in these days. But if you are a Christ follower, a true Christ follower, you'll keep his commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth within you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved in my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the world which word which ye know, not mine, which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, peace uh, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Man, what an, another amazing verse. Go to John 14 with a highlighter, and basically you could highlight the whole chapter, but there's so many great verses within John 14, within the whole Bible really, but so many good ones here. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, you might believe. 
Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me the commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. John 15 I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. That's true, isn't it? Without Christ we can do nothing. Without Christ, um, yeah. If we're not trusting Christ, then everything is meaningless. Because no matter how many works we do, no matter how much fruit we bring forth, um, it's just not enough. Not enough. Because we're not trusting Christ and the blood that's shed for us. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire that they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. What a great and simple verse that is, isn't it? See, when we are called to love people, we don't love their actions, their sins. We love them as the person, and we're not loving them for their benefit. We're loving it for Christ's benefit. Because remember, Christ said, they will know you. They will know Christ's disciples, Christ's followers, by your love. That's how they'll know us. That's how they'll know that you're a Christ follower, by love. Think of like how many religions there are in the world and how many religions, um, you know, don't say to love everyone. There's so many religions that don't say to love everyone. There's religions that say that you need to go kill people. There's religions that say you need to enslave people. How many religions actually say to love everyone? Not many. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. So he repeats it again. Must mean it's important. Anytime you see repeating in the Bible, guess what? It's important. Well, everything in the Bible is important, but when you see stuff repeated... In the same chapter or within the same few verses it's very important love one another if the world hate you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love his own but because you are not of the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you yeah what's the one religion that gets the most hate christianity especially in these days People can persecute Christians without any consequence. But if, if someone persecuted another religion, oh, they'd be hated. Yeah, they would be made an example of all over social media. They'd be canceled. They would be whatever. Hate speech. But you can hate Christians. I'm not going to get into that topic right now. But the fact is that Christians are the most hated. Well, Christ said Christ said we would be hated. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep 
yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not sinned. But now have they been both seen and hated, both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. John 16 These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Oh, this, this verse is great. If you've read the Bible, if you've read um, the New Testament, you know this is a prediction of what's to come in Acts. When, guess what? Saul of Tarsus, a.k.a. Paul, starts persecuting the early church, the early Christians. And, um, you know, different Christians are killed, martyred by the Jews, by, um, you know, Paul hunting them down, imprisoning them. So... It's a, it's a prediction of something to come, and it comes true, unfortunately. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is excellent for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and when he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, Is this that he saith unto us, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father? They said therefore, What is this that he saith, A little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that he, that ye, Shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. That's a, that's a good verse right there. Nobody can take our joy. If we are trusting Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross for us, and the blood shed for us, fully with all our heart and not in vain, we have joy. Our joy is everlasting life, and nobody could take that away from us, ever. And that's why, you know, there's that verse, this is the day the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Even, no matter what your circumstance is, even if it's a crabby circumstance, or you're going through trials or tribulations or temptations or persecutions, no matter what, whenever you wake up, you should say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because you have joy. You have joy. No matter what your circumstance is, you have joy. And that is, that is Jesus Christ. That's your joy. So when you can't think of anything good in your life, or anything positive, think about Jesus Christ, what he did for you on the cross. That's your joy. Eternal salvation. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, asking ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Great verses there as well. These things have I spoken to you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. And that day ye shall ask in my name, and I shall say, unto, say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because he loved me, and hath believed that I came out of God. 
I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. John 17 These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, and that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they are, have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these things alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all might be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may be, know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. John 18 When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come unto him, went forth and saith unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon then as he had said that unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the same might be fulfilled which he spake, Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain's officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. 
And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was not known to the high priest, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. And the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his head, hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas, led Jesus uh, from Caiaphas into the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him. If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then Pilate said unto him, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the same Jews might be filled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said to him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or to the others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? When he had said this, he went on again unto the Jews, and saith unto him, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you, one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Also we know from other Gospels that he was a murderer as well. John 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man! When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, and they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour. He saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, 
Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he that him therefore unto them that to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place that is called Place of the Skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the, Jew of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to his disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it into his mouth. Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that the Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he, sa that he saith true, that he might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. And after this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then they took the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre, wherein never was never a man yet laid. And laid they Jesus therefore because of the true preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. John 20 The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, to see, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. And she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first into the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, and went, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following, and went into the sepulchre, and see the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciple went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew that not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, <coughs> saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni. 
which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I am ascend unto my Father, and, and your Father, and to my God, and to your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he, he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto, the, his, unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Yep. Amen to that. Jesus 20, uh, excuse me, John 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. They were together, there were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into the ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitudes of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. The other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but it, as it were two hundred cubits dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. And Jesus saith unto them, Bring the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And other disciples durst asked him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples, after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. 
And Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to thee, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that this disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Wow, I always love John, the very Indian John, because of this last verse that gives me chills and goosebumps. Think about that for a second. If someone wrote down every single miracle and things that Jesus did, the world could not even contain the amount of books. But we were given just the right amount that we may believe, like the other chapter says. Right here, John twenty thirty one. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. God gave us the perfect amount. He didn't want us to have like a Bible that was, you know, a million pages long. He gave us the perfect amount for what we need to believe. Yes, there's way more written. There's, there's way more that Christ did, I mean. But it's not all written down because he gave us enough for us to believe. And it's up to us to believe it or not, by faith or not, in vain or not. So. I just love the way John ends this. Like, this is just an epic way to end his book. <sighs> Goosebumps. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him. Trust in him. Wait upon him. Hope in him. And you'll never be sorry. And God willingly, we will see you tomorrow with more Bible reading. So thanks again. Take care and God bless.